audio check, composition, talk about our background and what the heck we are doing with this. <laughs> What's up YouTube? Today's gonna be a fun one. Devin and I actually just upgraded our primary camera body for YouTube videos, which we're filming on right now. We're gonna go into a lot of depth on our first impressions, why we made the upgrade. Zeke might sneeze a couple times over here in the kitchen, and uh, that'll be that. First, why we chose to pick this camera up specifically. If you're new to the channel, my name is Weston Smith. This is Zeke right here. There's young Juno. We've got a couple cats and dogs. You guys will meet the rest of the fur family throughout the videos on this page, I'm sure. So go ahead and hit subscribe. We'll catch y'all on some future videos. Now let's talk about this camera rig right here. We are so pumped to have this thing. Let's go. Guys, Devin and I are here at the Starbucks. Woo, meeting up with the Craigslist seller to grab the new camera. Pretty excited. <laughs> Just kidding, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, and I, like you couldn't get them for like the first six months that the body was out, and they yeah. had to have some in stock. Right. Ooh, filming on the new camera, and let me tell you what, it's supposed to perform better in the dark, got the wider angle. I think you guys are gonna like this. All right, guys, it all started about 10 years ago, January of 2010 to be exact. We actually made the channel in 2009, but our first video was put out under the channel name 3GS Drum Videos, which is now this channel, Weston Smith. And uh, yeah, filming videos on iPhone 3GS. What I hold in my hands now is an original iPhone we still happen to have just lying in the closet. And uh, so I started off making drum covers. That was kind of like what I wanted to do with my channel back then in 2010. And I did a few covers only being filmed on the iPhone 3GS. I don't even think I made any cuts. It was just a straight upload. Uh, the videos were nothing fantastic post-production wise, let's put it that way. <laughs> I never really started cranking out tons of drum covers and getting any sort of views or traction, I would say, except for maybe one or two that had kind of popped off and uh, never never monetized the channel, didn't know you could make money on YouTube. And then in 2015, I believe it was May 2015, I got into moto vlogs. My wife and I, Devin, we had picked up a couple motorcycles. We've owned a couple Ducatis now and Groms, little Honda Groms. And Super fun. So anyways, that's uh, the quick shifter. That We messed around making moto vlogs for a while and uh, I still hadn't monetized the channel but I was getting quite a few views and I was actually consistent with maybe one video per week. I would say I made about 50 or so moto vlogs uh, from 2015 to 2016 before we had sold the motorcycles and I kind of lost interest and uh, and making those I, I show you this because i was filming with this camera the drift hd ghost and i had a mic plugged into the uh, cheek pads here and that's how you could avoid the wind noise and you could actually uh, get a good looking vlog and they were all shot on this camera right here there was no third person view no perspective like this no main camera you might say there was only the drift hd ghost and then after a year of those, I tapered off the moto vlogs. Again, we sold the motorcycles and I was not really focused on YouTube. Uh, there was no reason necessarily. I wasn't making any money off of it. I was just creating videos for the fun of it. And that was that. Fast forward though a couple years, we actually were going on a vacation to New Zealand and Australia in March of 2017 and I had bought my first GoPro. This is in the chest mount, but I had just bought the GoPro. Uh, I think it was a Hero 5 and I had bought, uh, because it had the waterproof housing, we wanted to do some underwater video while we were out there on vacation. Also, I bought my first stabilizer. I think this is when they were maybe gaining popularity and there was the smaller ones, more handheld use for like phones and uh, GoPros, et cetera, smaller action cameras. So we had bought a gimbal and it was the DJI Osmo Mobile. And I just kind of like rigged the GoPro up on there. And anyways, you can rig the GoPro on your Osmo Mobile stabilizer. While we were over there in New Zealand and Australia, I was taking some video with that stabilizer are kind of falling back in love with the video making process and then of course editing it I think it turned out fantastic and I was very psyched to make some more video drones were gaining popularity then and the GoPro Karma is our first drone that we had picked up now we're using the Mavic Air that we've taken on a few different vacations to Iceland and such and we use that drone primarily for all our videos now and just being hyped on video all over again after that vacation it kind of made me look around for something that I wanted to be able to create content around and at some point I came across some fishing vlogs and I had seen some big time fishing vloggers that now have over a million subscribers these guys were making fishing look so much fun I could watch a short vlog by them and all they're doing is catch fish as a sport I had 
pretty much zero interest in. Literally, I looked up videos on how to hold a bass, a type of fish, and that is how I came across their videos uh, and got the interest in maybe creating some content like that. And so that's when I got the chest mount for the GoPro and I started making fishing vlogs in October of 2017. So from October to a few months in, I only made vlogs on the GoPro. We didn't have a main camera. It was all GoPro footage once again. There was nothing like this new camera we just bought to help us out with like a third person perspective perspective and finally we saw the need to get our first larger camera DSLR interchangeable lenses maybe capture some more depth of field and get that new perspective and so we had bought our first camera and I'm sorry I'm dragging this story out but I want you guys to know where we came from and the whole point of this being our dream camera what led up to it and why we purchased this right here so we bought that first main camera body it was the Canon SL2 I watched a lot of videos on that being like the top camera for vloggers in that time like entry level you know kind of like balling on a budget that's the camera you get it had the flip out screen uh, I think I had got like a 10 to 18 millimeter lens with it I think I had just purchased the body only and that lens because I wanted a wider lens than maybe the kit lens that had come with it I had gone through a couple lenses that were probably I think they were Sigma's just a uh, smaller aperture really control that depth of field and so what I mean by that of course if you guys are not uh, if you guys don't shoot video on a daily basis is kind of blurring that back and isolating the subject so we picked up a Sigma lens with the lower aperture I believe it was the Sigma 18 to 55 1.4 I think that's the lens and then we decided we wanted to dabble in the slow motion realm the 120 frames per second get some creamy smooth b-roll for our edits and add that in as well uh, highly inspired by Peter McKinnon if you watch any of his videos you will understand why we are interested in that and so uh, I'll link his channel below I'm sure you, this guy's got millions of subscribers now. He's just phenomenal when it comes to video, editing, tutorials when it comes to cameras. I'm gonna leave all that stuff to him. We're gonna talk about our first impressions on this thing. That is what got us interested in the slow motion and why we decided to pick up the camera that I'm shooting on now over the Canon SL2, which was an affordable entry-level camera by Sony, the A6400 that shoots 1080 HD, 120 frames per second footage so you can really get some high quality slow motion in your videos. Then we decided to pick up the lens that we are using on this camera now, Tamron 17 to 28 2.8. The thing's beast, and it was a full frame lens with the intention of knowing we were going to eventually upgrade to this camera in the future, as well as the partner to this lens, the 28 to, I always forget these focal lengths, as well as the 28 to 75 that we're shooting with on the camera right now. If you guys are also curious about how we're getting this crisp, clean audio, I will link the Sennheiser wireless mic that I am using down in the description below for your viewing pleasure. Go ahead and take a look at it. This is the Rode Video Micro mic. Uh, we've talked about the lenses now. This is just uh, the uh, Ronin S attachment for our stabilizer. And then I'm rocking that Peter McKinnon neutral density two to five stop filter. I like to keep my shutter speed at 50th of a second for a lot of my 24 frames per second footage. I also like to keep it at 250th of a second for my 120 uh, frames per second footage. So that is where this neutral density filter comes into play when we're environments where the light is changing and you can just flip this on the fly and it really helps you keep your shutter speed dialed in. If you're interested in the filter, it's gonna be down there as well, but I wanna hurry and get to this camera. Why did we decide to upgrade? So what we picked up on a whim last night after me only telling Devin I wanted it the day before, she literally found this on Facebook Marketplace and quite a few from sellers that we actually got a good price on is the Sony a7 III full frame camera. The thing is a beast and really needs no introduction. It is used as the primary camera by many YouTubers that have a million plus subscribers and many millions of subscribers. It is a workhorse. It gets the job done. This is a used body that we paid $14.50 for. The camera still sells new for somewhere around the $2,000 price range. It truly is the dream camera for Devin and myself for making our content over here on the Weston Smith channel. We are super excited about this thing right here for all the reasons we're about to get into. So let's go ahead and dive in. First and foremost for me, it was the fact that I can now get the full range out of this lens right here, this Tamron 17 to 28. When you're shooting on an A6400 and you have this exact lens on it, like I've been using for a, quite a while now, uh, the 17 becomes actually a 25 millimeter equivalent on this camera. And the reason is because that smaller sensor is gonna crop in the image a little bit and so you're not getting full use out of your wide angle lenses. And this lens essentially became a 25 to like 40 or whatever, 50. I don't know. On this camera body, it's a true 17 millimeter compared to like a 35 millimeter camera. And so if I'm holding the camera right here, the shot is much wider. I can't put a price on that for my videos. 
especially with how fast paced I can be with the camera. Whenever you have a wider angle lens, you don't notice as much of that shake. And so that is a huge benefit for me. I won't have to hold the camera out as far and really go like this to capture all that I want to capture and be able to talk to you guys and, and uh, create a, a fun and exciting video. I can literally hold this camera right here. So if I zoom this in, I'm going to overlay this footage. If I zoom this into 25, this is about how this lens looks on that camera right here if it's zoomed all the way out, but it's zoomed in. So look at how much extra range I'm gonna get now. I'm gonna zoom it out, boom, all that extra range, and it's gonna make it look less shaky. This camera has in-body stabilization. That is another big thing about the upgrade. Uh, we do also have an A6500 camera body that we use as backup from the A6400, and I've used it in a couple videos, and, and you notice a little less camera shake, and so that was a benefit. There's a few things on the A6400 that I like, and I use this camera more frequently, but that still doesn't take away the fact that this camera gets an amazing wider angle and has the in-body stabilization, so those are two reasons why we made this switch. The depth of field is supposed to be even more shallow on these full-frame cameras, so you can isolate the subject even that much more and make that background get thrown into more of a creamy, blurry uh, abyss. So let's say I had to hold the A6400 right here to get a wide perspective. I can now hold this camera a little bit closer to me and still get that wide perspective because the angle is wider. Uh, I don't like getting into all the specs and the scientific stuff, that's just not my style. But let's say I was holding that camera and I'm holding it out here. The background is technically closer in focus because the camera's focused further away. If I'm right here, the background is further out of focus because the camera is focused closer. So it really does help get you that depth of field. And also the low light capabilities are supposed to be much higher on these fuller frame cameras. So I might be able to film for a little bit longer at sunset with whatever type of content I'm creating or just get better detail out of the shadows and the darker areas of the image or video I'm taking and that of course can make all the difference if you're trying to make these YouTube videos huge up to the a7 III. With those few awesome reasons on why we made this upgrade to the Sony a7 III, I cannot wait to film more videos with it and also dive in more to this camera, figure out even more about the things you can do with this thing on the fly. The one thing you can value is so many more switches and toggles. You can have a lot of presets right at your fingertips. You can make some of these fast switches on the fly with this camera that would require going into the menus more frequently with those entry level cameras and less adjustments. I think we're gonna create some amazing content with this thing moving forward. And by getting rid of the a6500, it's gonna take away some of the cost of this camera right here. That is the beauty of starting small and upgrading as you go. You never really lose too much. It's not like we spent two grand on this camera, for instance. We spent 1450. We're gonna sell that a6500 for most likely, uh, it's gonna end up taking this price of this camera to under a thousand dollars guaranteed once we get rid of that as far as like what we spent total. So we're insanely excited about this camera and can't wait to feature it in more videos. And if you guys would like to see a video on how we have this camera set up and our presets for video as well as maybe a few more details on mic and how to get the best audio quality, maybe some details on uh, anything and everything. I hope this spikes some questions from you guys down in the comments section that we can answer and maybe even turn into a full-on video. We're not going to stop our traditional content. We just like to mix in some of these tutorials, first impressions, and we're so excited about this camera that it had to be its own video for you guys. But if you'd like to see more from us, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications bell on so you get notified when we drop more information about this camera in future videos, and we will see you guys then. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one. Peace. <gasps>